Hello everybody, uh, my name is Moses and you are welcome to Staple Rock Farms. Uh, on today's episode, we are looking at uh, uh, pig breeds. Uh, what kind of breeds uh, should you go for when you are starting your farm? Right? And uh, I have received several uh, messages uh, from you guys uh, asking which ones to go for. And uh, in this video, we'll try to look at the several options available and which ones uh, you should go for so uh let's get right into it so as you know we are going to to uh follow our biosecurity measures before we step into our pen and if you watched my previous video you will know that this is something you should do uh every time to ensure that you don't bring any foreign bacteria into uh into the farm right into your pen so uh, on our farm we have four breeds of pigs that uh, we raise that we take care of up to the point of harvest uh, where we sell them uh, either for slaughter or uh, to other farms for breeding so right off the bat if you look uh, on this side you see that this uh, the Duroc pigs. Uh, this breed is called a Duroc and uh, one of his major characteristics is that you notice is uh, it's a reddish kind of uh, color, right? So this is how you know it's a Duroc and if you notice his, his ears are a bit droopy also. So and the hoofs, if you notice the hoofs are uh, hoofs, legs, nails, or, you know where they um, land their feet on it's black so these are some of the major characteristics in which you use to be able to tell uh, what a Duroc uh, breed is so this is a late maturing very muscular type of breed uh, it's originated in the US and uh, a mature sow can go for between 200 to 300 kg and a mature boar, boar can go for uh, 220 kg to 350 kg or thereabout. So it, it, it can be very massive. Uh, it's known for its high carcass uh, rate. So this is uh, one of the pure breeds we have on our farm. All right. So let's take a look at the other breeds. So let's go uh, and take a look. Oh, and by the way. If you look around the whole pen, you'll notice it's been covered with trampoline. Uh, the reason is because it started raining uh, here in our location. And the rain stopped literally just a few minutes ago. So it hasn't been raised up yet. It was raining and to prevent uh, the rainwater from spilling into, into the pens, that's why you see that it dropped. I'm going to, actually, we have done a video on that and I'll be releasing it soon here for you to see how this was done and why it's done uh, so look out for that so um, what other breeds do we have we have several breeds here uh, for for the purpose of this video oh yeah this is a little different breed compared to the one i showed the other so what breed is this if you notice if you notice this uh, pig you see here is very large, it's very big, it's long. Uh, but how you'll be able to tell what breed it is, is from the ears. You can see the ears are a bit droopy also, right? And uh, another characteristic to look out for is the, the, the nose, the snout. It's quite long, right? So you, from this analysis, you should be able to tell that this is... Uh, 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 a hybrid, right? A crossbreed, however you want to call it. So what this means is a pure breed uh, was crossed with a local breed. So in this case, that is uh, a land race breed that was crossed with a local breed. A land race is the second breed we are talking about uh, for the breeds we have on this farm. The first I talked about was the Duroc, which you saw earlier, which was red in color, reddish, brownish in color. The second, which we haven't seen yet, we have seen the crossbreed version of it, is the land race, 
right? So this is a cross breed. So what this means is a land raised boar uh, was crossed with a local sow to be able to get this breed, right? So next, if you go this way, you can see here we have this is a local breed. So this is a local breed, and uh, from the size of, of it, you notice that it's also an impressive breed. Now, why am I capitalizing on that? Uh, many people I talk with, whenever we are having this kind of conversations on what kind of breed they should have on their farm, they're usually apprehensive when you mention local breeds. The reason is because they say local breeds won't serve you on the farm as well as pure breeds, which to a certain extent you can agree with. However, at the end of the day, it's the kind of practices you practice on your farm. If you notice from the size of it, you see that it's an impressive local breed. So if you take care of your pigs, uh, give them good water, give them good food, make sure they're in a clean environment and things like that. To be honest, it, sometimes it doesn't even matter what kind of breed you have, right? But that's by the way, we'll get, we'll, 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 that's a topic for another day. So uh, for the purpose of this video, this is the third breed we have on our farm, which is the local breed. So, the key to getting a good local breed for your farm is ensuring you know the history of the farm you are purchasing the pig from, right? If you see, this, is, uh, this, this pig uh, currently is, is almost at around 205, 210 kg. For a local breed, that's pretty impressive, right? Now, why is that? We're, we made sure that we purchased this pig from a reputable farm. We knew the history of the pig, the history of the boar, the history of the sow, the, that's the parents. We made sure there was no inbreeding. We made sure all the iron, uh, deworming, etc. All the proper practices were taking place uh for this sow before we purchased it uh when we did right so at the end of the day make sure that whichever breed you are getting uh you are getting from a reputable farm where you can be able to tell that property care was given to it before you purchased it so uh as you can see here we have another local breed now this pig is even bigger than the one you just saw right so uh the point i'm making here is that for those who think local breeds are not good breeds to go with that's that's not true all that matters is you purchase it from a reputable farm and you take care of it uh in the correct manner on your own farm and you you'll be able to have something like that uh, even when it's a local breed so uh so far we have talked about the duroc we have talked about the land race which you haven't seen yet you have seen a crossbreed version of it i will show you the actual land race soon and then we've talked about the local so let's go ahead and see what next we have in store so uh earlier you saw the crossed land race so the land race was a, a pure breed land race bar uh crossed with a local uh, sow, right? However, here uh, I think it's even good that we have two uh, pigs here. You can be able to tell the difference. So if you look at the one, this one, do you notice the ears? The ears are extremely droopy. Now, this is how you tell that this is a land race. And if you notice in the nose, the snout is not as long as the one you saw earlier that I said was uh, a crossed breed, right? So this is what a land race looks like. Now we have uh, some of these, uh, which are the pure breeds of land race. Then we have the crossed ones, uh, and which other breed? Oh, yeah. So let's go uh, to the other pen for you to be able to see what other breeds we have. So uh, to summarize so far, we have taken a look at our Duroc peaks. We have taken a look at our land race peaks. We well, have taken a look at our local pigs, and now let's go and take a look at the final uh, breed we have on our farm. Uh, here we are in our... So the, the pen we just left, which you saw earlier, was the maternity pen, right? 
So that's where we have uh, the pregnant gills and sows. That's where we keep our uh, boards also, right? Uh, here, this is our grower pen. So what this means is uh, the pigs that have been weaned, uh, you know, and all the other growers are here, right? And uh, that's what we're going to take a look at. So now, what other breeds are we looking at? We have local breeds and some other breeds here. So let's go all the way to this pen, which is where our final breed uh, on this farm is. Now, here we have this breed called large whites. So large white pigs are pinkish in color. Yeah, they are pink in color and how you can be able to tell is that their skin is almost like silky smooth pink right they've got hairs on their skin but the skin is so pink that it's almost silky right and then they are free from other colors if you notice all of them are just pure pink and there's no other variation of colors on them right so these are also pure breed large whites and well from the name you can be able to tell that they become uh, very large right if you notice their ears, unlike uh, the Duroc or the Landrace you saw earlier, the large ones, they have erect ears, right? If you notice, they have erect ears. And a mature large white sow can go for around 260 kg to uh, 300 kg. And a mature boar should go for between 350 to 380 kg. So they, 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 they become extremely, extremely uh, uh, large, just as is said in the name. So these are the major um, breeds. These are the main breeds we have on our farm. We have the Duroc breed, we have the land race breed, we have the uh, large white breed, and then we have the local breed, right? So, now, which of these should you go for on your farm? To be honest, you can go for any of these. However, if there's a recommendation I can make, is for those who uh, cannot afford to have all of these breeds on their farm, you can start with a local sow, right? You start with your local sow, and then you get one of these pure breeds. Let's say, for example, a large white. You get a large white, Boar, boar to cross with your local sow and you get very good crossbreed now let me give you an example if you take a look at this pen you notice that all these are sows right all this there's no guilt here they are all sows these are all local pigs that have uh farrowed on this farm for us right now when it's time for them to mate with a male. We bring one of the uh, uh, pure breeds. We don't bring a local breed to cross with them. We bring either um, a large white, a land race, or a duroc to cross with them, right? So by doing so, you still are able to get a very good breed, uh, regardless of the fact of you having all of them being pure breeds, right? So this way it helps you, uh, especially if you don't have the finances to have all of them on the farm like, like we do. And, oh, and by the way, mind you, uh, uh, the, the sows that have farrowed, that have given us the highest liters, have all been local. We've had local breeds that have given us 16, 17 uh, 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 liter, liter size, right? per birth, right? So uh, I keep capitalizing on the fact that, you know, so many people that I have conversations with don't want to even entertain the idea of having local breeds on their farm. Uh, uh, I am of the opinion that you should have local breeds on your farm. Uh, Complement them with pure breeds like this because some people are specifically looking for pure breeds. Uh, and then, for those who are looking for pure breeds, you cross them with the local and you still get a high little uh, size and 
you know, uh, you save uh, cost on your farm. Now, the second point for which breed you should go for. At the end of the day, you are starting this farm because you want to uh, get these pigs to a mature weight enough for you to sell for a good price. Either for slaughter or for breeding or for whatever reasons you are keeping these pigs on your farm. Right? So that begs the next question. Uh, what is the growth rate of which breed? Uh, and then depending on that, which one should you go for? Right? So obviously, uh, the pure breeds will uh, grow faster and they have better feed conversion rate compared to the local breeds. Now, this is where the foreign, the, the pure breeds have an advantage over the local breeds, right? Which is why I said the best thing, just cross them so that you get a little bit of both genes in the pigs and you enjoy your pigs on your farm right so um for us based on popular demand based on popular demand we have noticed that uh the large white then the land race then the duroc then the local based on popular based on popularity in customers on what they want right uh so the the way i i categorize it now is from the most important to least important uh for which one to have on your farm however this does not uh, this does not automatically mean uh the 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 cost also uh, is is broken down like that for us we have noticed that our duroc pigs our uh, duroc pigs we, we sell them for a much higher price than other pure breeds right so there are so many factors uh leading up to which breed you should go for uh it's hard it's difficult for me to tell you which one to go for but based on these different options and attributes i've given you you should be able to tell which one you can go for another thing to look out for is your locality right uh what kind of breeds are, are most in demand uh, where you live right where you live some people the people there may generally be more interested in large whites so obviously you go for more large whites or they could want more drugs, so you go for more drugs. Or it could be in an extremely rural area where uh, many people may not afford to purchase um, things like uh, duroc, for example. So based on that, you know that a duroc is not going to be feasible for you to have as the, the, the breed of pigs on your farm, right? So there's so many different factors that can make you decide which breeds to go for uh for uh in the next video i uh, will probably uh release a video that best explains all the practices you should uh do on your farm to ensure number one you have good breeds uh they are maturing as should they're getting the kind of weight they're getting they're healthy and things like that because at the end of the day what we have noticed on our farm is uh, regardless of what breed you bring, uh, the way you take care of them truly, truly determines uh, their value for you as a farmer. So I'll probably, in the next video, uh, release that kind of video that gives a full breakdown on what you should do to ensure your pigs are growing fast. Uh, funny enough for us, most of our pigs, we end up selling them at five months rather than six months. Right, which is usually around the average period where you can have good weight to be able to sell your pigs. So that just goes to show you that uh, the practices on your farm determine um, what kind of value or what kind of pigs, what kind of breeds you should have. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you again in the next video.